Hey guys, welcome back to the Burnout Brighter Podcast. Tonight, we're actually going to do something a little different. Basically, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of the things that happened uh, this past Saturday up in Buffalo, New York, and we pride ourselves in talking about mental health, gaming, and social justice. And this is one of the topics that fall under social justice, and we definitely want to use our platform to uplift our voices, to talk about what's going on, and basically check in with you guys, make sure you're okay. Um, at the end of this, we will definitely post some links down below. If you're feeling stressed out, you know, if you're dealing with PTSD, if like this is just a very overwhelming situation for you, we definitely want to give you um, ways to reach out to someone who could professionally help you or just a counselor that you can talk to. You do not have to go through this alone. And uh, I was really nervous about coming on and talking about this situation because um, when it happened, I didn't even have the emotional bandwidth to like uh, really read and uh, watch the videos. Uh, Sunday, I kind of had some stuff sent to me and then today I realized that um, it, it's not my job to talk about it. It's not my job to educate uh, white people on, you know, the ins and outs of being a black person, but being a black person and being on this platform, I feel like I need to do it. If I don't do it, then who else is going to do it? And I really want to just say that I appreciate all of the content creators out there who've taken the time to stop and really talk about this because these are conversations that we need to have. What happened this past Saturday was absolutely fucking horrific. Uh, we had an 18-year-old white male who, I mean, decided that black people's lives weren't worth it all based on the idea that people of color are going to one day kind of take over things and, and make white people obsolete, which is absolutely stupid and ridiculous. But that was part of his motivation. Uh, he drove two to three hours out of his way to a predominantly black area, walked into a store and began shooting. Uh, one of the things that I saw that just kind of broke my heart was the fact that he did run up on someone who was white and he actually apologized to that man and then went on to continue to hunt down black and, and brown people and people of color in the store. Um, and we're just tired of it. We're tired of having to turn on the news and see it. And we're tired of it being quote unquote commonplace. Like I talked to someone the other day and they were like, is it bad that like, I kind of feel like, well, that's just what happens in America. Absolutely. That is fucking terrible. And it shouldn't be like that. Um, I know that I'm just going to throw her name out here. Uh, Verda from GameHers, who's uh, one of the co-founders of that. She lives in Harlem, New York, and that's predominantly black and brown people. And she has a lot of anxiety because what if she goes into a store and somebody else decides that, you know, they have the right to go in and just murder a bunch of people. I think one of the things that I take away from this, and it's every time this fucking happens, and it's with someone who who's white and they put it on the news, well, this person's struggling with mental illness, which could be the case. Um, but it's like they try to downplay that this person is basically a fucking terrorist. Like what he did was terrorizing. What he has done has left a lasting mark on these families that have lost people that they will never see again. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. It's going to be about the state of our world and not just the US. There's racism all over the place, but we're really going to kind of like hone in and talk about this incident, how it makes us feel. And I encourage you to reach out, leave comments if you also want to say something about it, because it's just, uh, it's just fucked up. And it makes me really, really sad that we even have to have this conversation. But um, yeah. Um, I asked Baron to come on because I did not think that I would be able to do it by myself. And sometimes it makes me feel like I'm like really weak um, when I say that I'm scared or that I'm nervous because I don't want to be scared and I don't want to be nervous. And I know that that's what they want. Um, so regardless of me being scared and regardless of me being nervous and fearful for those who I love and, and my black brothers and sisters and people of color, I'm still going to speak. 
and um, this is how I'm going to do it. And this is the platform that I'm going to use. And I appreciate Matt and Lou being here as well, um, because this is not just a black problem. It's it's a world problem. But mm -hmm. OK. Baron. Yeah. I, um, thank you so much for coming on uh, today. I know I hit you up last minute, um, but I was just, I just didn't think I could do it by myself and I needed another, yeah. I needed another black person on, on here. Yeah, no. Me. I know it sounds no. wild, but. Um, no. Um, and I'm, I want to say this, and I think as a, as a collective, this is as black people in the U.S. And it's funny, that's a whole nother thing, you know, just even the term black, we're black. That's an American thing. Like, that's not a, that's not, like, but our anger, our full range of emotions are okay. I always felt that we, for some reason, don't get to fully access our full range of emotions. Um, You know, I, I think of my coworker uh, back when we used to be in the office with my nine to five, you know, she, I felt like she couldn't show any form of frustration because then it was angry black woman. Um, uh, I'm afraid to complain about when my, my order's wrong. Cause I don't want to be, you know, I have to constantly be mindful of my presence. I'm a big black dude, you know, I'm 360 pounds, six foot. I'm a big black guy. I understand this. And normally my hair is down twisted. Like I understand the optics. So, but, but why is it that I can't be angry? You know, I, I, I'm the communications director for level one. And oftentimes I find my, I hate that. I just plug that. It's just so natural. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, it's, it just flows. Right. But yeah. it, it, it's so crazy that so much of what I do is a, a tampered down version of who I am simply because I have to sell. You know, like it's, it's it's what I do. You know, some you know people are like, "Oh, you're being fake." It's like, no, no, no. This is who I am, but I'm giving you a the most clean, professional version of it that I can. Absolutely. Now, back with this, and the whole point I'm saying all of this is, when do we get to be angry? When do and and why is it that everybody wants us to be extremely okay and docile? Now, am I saying go out and cause mayhem? No, but what do you expect from people? What what do you truly expect from people? Um, and then you try to tell us that it's not racism or it's not terrorism. And then you diminish what's going on and you try to label it as something else to protect. I, you know, then you start throwing age and you start throwing They're in all these different us. things. Yeah. And it, it's like, when do I get to have the full range of my At what setting? When do I get to be angry? When do I get to be hurt? When? When? Uh, how far? How far does it um, does it have to go? Um, I I think of certain scenarios and I'm like, man, I couldn't, you know, watching somebody show their anger, whether it's with law enforcement, whether it's with uh, another individual. I was like, I, I couldn't do that. Like, I just know instinctually. I know. I. Let me rephrase. The chances of me walking out of that scenario clean is a lot lower <laughs> than most mm -hmm. other people. And I have to walk around with that reality. Now, there's people out there who don't. Sometimes I envy it, but then I, I still have to function in this world. What is it? Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, like the souls of black folk, like the duality of it all. Like you, you have like I have to I have to be aware of your world and your interpretation of me at, while all, times. all, at mm -hmm. all times, all times, but yet this happens and I'm not allowed to crack. I'm not allowed to show like, what, what do you, are we supposed to just forgive? Are we supposed to like, do you know what I'm like? I'm sick of that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm I'm over forgiving people for like fucking with us. Yeah. I, oh my god, I don't I'm know what shut... case it was, but I remember. No, I do. It was the white cop, the white woman who shot that black guy, shot her boyfriend. I can't oh, when he was eating ice names. cream. Yes, 
and the fucking judge came down and hugged her and the judge was yeah. black and i was yeah. fucking living oh yeah i was oh. like are you kidding me what are you doing when have you ever seen a white judge come down off a fucking podium and hug a black person for murdering a white person that's never fucking happened especially because it's like the media and the narrative around it like i you brought it up at the top of the show d but like when it's a white person usually a white man that does anything like this the media and the news articles spin in such a specific way that make it seems like look at how this person has been struggling look at the issues that this person have yeah. obviously this is the reason why it's paint look at any like there was one uh, there was a tweet going around comparing two articles one of which was about this situation it was like uh you know young a uh, white man blah, 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 like young white boy like they literally like changed the way that the words yeah. are structured and they pulled up another one that was like a 60 year old black kid who you know something happened i don't remember exactly what but they're like 16 year old you know black man blah, blah 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 like even just the way that they spin the words and then on top of the fact that it's like this whole forgiveness and like the whole narrative around it also spins out very quickly because there's a certain subsect of people that are like, let's hear both sides. Like, let's let's meet in the middle. We I have to that. meet in the middle to have these conversations. And it's just like that. They never want to meet in the middle when it's conversations that they don't like. Then it's our way or the highway. When it's something that they know that they're wrong about and something that they know that they can spin out. If it doesn't go along with the, you know, the big white agenda, then it's no you're wrong if it does then oh let's meet in the middle let's understand each other there's never there's never ever ever any empathy going in the right direction absolutely um it's it, it is a way to like to, to make the the community empathize with him by by changing it to boy and and, and all of mm -hmm. these things and like oh you know he may have come from like a divorced parents and like there was all this bullshit that they stack up but like for example i'm i'm gonna use trayvon martin because um, mm. the way they try to blacken his name, the way they tried to blacken his character was just mind blowing. I'm still not over that case. I don't know how his mother or his father could go through. Because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm put it on record. If I had a child and my child was minding their business, and they were just coming home and my child didn't make it home because some white man decided to fucking kill my child, I would be in jail. I would be in fucking jail. There's absolutely no way I would be able to stand on a podium and make speeches about it. I would be in jail and he would be fucking six feet under. And I'm not like uh, a murderer or anything like that. No, no, that no, out. no, no, no. But, but I'm but just let me tell saying, you, like that situation when you hurt my family or my babies, I am yeah. coming for you. Mm -hmm. Especially when you know nothing's going to happen to them. Exactly and the guy's still making too. money off of the scenario. He's yep. still making money. I just yep. signing I Skittle, signing it. bags of Skittles. I mean, like, look at fucking <sighs> like look at Rittenhouse. The guy's like a oh, like yeah. he's like he's on how? Oh, much he's going to run for office. Oh, he's going to be a politician. Oh, on, he's right? in the like, next 10 years he'll be a politician. There's no accountability. Oh, yeah. There's no oh, accountability. Easy. easy. Um you I don't you know what? I'm here anymore, man. No, I'm I'm going to tell you. Um I this is what I think our biggest mistake is. Uh, and not a mistake where I think we need to pivot uh as black people. Um and it's funny when I say black people I literally mean black folks in the US. Yes. We need to cry louder cry louder we need to sue for more we need to it, it i i've always felt the strong forgiving card has completely played us into a corner of well they'll be okay oh well, you realize what that is that is literally yeah. why they forced christianity onto slaves yeah. and it's, yeah. it's so fucked up it's such a mind fuck that you yeah. and i I have nothing against people who are religious, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. just don't, yeah, I yeah. don't understand. I don't understand yeah. how you can follow a religion that was forced on you and then be like, God is good. God is great. 
I, yeah. It just blows oh, my fucking mind. It's really hard for me. Like, I respect that. If that's what you believe, yeah. that's what you believe. But me and myself, there's absolutely no way I could believe in a God who um, lets shit like this happen. An all-powerful God who lets shit like this happen. And I don't mean to get, like, religious no, on us. No, no. But it is it is a part of it. And you and you see it all the time. We just got to forgive. No, mm-hmm. we no. fucking don't. No, and we don't need to stop crying. Um, and when I say cry, I, I do mean literal crying. But one thing I've noticed, and think about every other demographic out there. The moment you do anything to them, the yeah. weight of God falls on your shoulders. Like, immediately. Any other demographic. Let's break... We, I mean, shout out to the Asian community and the LGBTQ community because I've seen laws get passed within months of something happening. And here it is. We barely got an anti-lynching law. Yeah. Just got signed. <laughs> like, that like was, just got signed. Just oh, got wait, signed. wait. I got one worse than that. What's in how can something be worse than an anti lynching law barely being passed in the, the year of our Lord 2022? Uh, I want to say 2016 is when there was a state that barely took out uh verbiage around slavery. Um, I forget, I'll, I'll say in the teens, I want to say it was in the teens that a state it might have been Mississippi, but I don't want to disrespect them like that. But it was definitely a barely, southern state. Yeah, they barely removed the verbiage of slavery out of like this is within our lifetime. Um, I believe it. We still have sundown towns in certain areas. Oh, that's a fact. Oh, that we still is have a sundown fact. towns in certain areas. Um, oh. where like if you're a person of color, if you're not out by sundown, you're more more than likely you will not make it out. The of good town. old boys. The good yep. old boys. I mean, it, so in saying this, and my whole reasoning for you know when I say we need to cry louder is we have to make sure that nothing goes unpunished and it needs to hit it. So it, there needs to be a fear. Is it going to be worth this? Is it going to be, you know, I, I think of Dick Gregory when he mentioned, you know, rolling over in law enforcement. I know. A, and it's crazy because law enforcement didn't do have anything to do with this, but it plays a major part because how is it this, this kid who just killed 10 people, Live guns running through, no scrapes on them, clean. The same cuffs. thing that happened with oh god, I can't oh, remember his the name. last four or the five church. guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the guy who went into the church <laughs> like, and they bought him fucking McDonald's because he was hungry. Yeah, I mean, I'm smiling, but I'm. It's not funny. No, I'm smiling it, it, at the it's no of how because of how ridiculous. stupid that yeah. is. How insane it is, and and once again, this is part of the. I really that is something. I've been saying and preaching and like getting on my soapbox about is I really believe we need to cry so much louder and every, like we need to sue for another, whatever. And then not just us suing, it needs to be a collective, the city, the, it, it, and I don't know how to make this happen, but I do know that the forgiveness has to stop, especially on camera. It has to stop. We need because to all that. we need to because all it does is it shovels us back like okay now they're 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 docile they're good now you know throw the family three million dollars and tell them you know we're sorry and we'll, we'll move on next and that's it's what a scary always thing because I don't think oh. they care about our tears so it's, I don't think they care and that's that's what makes me upset like i think we could cry our eyes out and they wouldn't care and that's just that's really just what it is they don't care is so how how can we i don't know it's so it's so strange right like i this sounds so shitty but i almost feel like there's not a lot black people can do True. like we've screamed we've cried we've been died shot at camera. we've been died on camera suffocated on camera yeah it is literally going to take the white community yeah. to fucking help us get to where we need to be and i mean yeah. like 
we've already seen it, right? So even though the Civil War wasn't necessarily just about slavery, like that was just a part that Abraham Lincoln kind of threw in because, you know, like it's going to take white people to get to that level because they don't care about us. And, th- and the same thing, and I'm not saying all white people don't care about us. No, okay? no, no. Because I hate making like kids statements, you. but they don't care. And the fact that they don't care means that they're not going to change because it doesn't really bother them, right? The people who are at the top, they see the shit on the news and they, they sit in their jacuzzi and they drink their champagne and it doesn't fucking bother them. Mm-hmm. And we have so many selfish people in the United States. I don't no, I mean we literally have they're literally taking away women's rights. Like yeah, within as we Tennessee, speak. they just fucking banned plan B. They're trying yeah. to ban condoms and birth yeah. control. And it's and that was in Arizona, this, right? Yeah, there's literally yeah. these fucking white men at the top who are just they just don't care. They don't care. And I don't know how to fix it because a lot of people are saying oh well you know they'll age out they'll die out no we literally had oh. an 18 year old boy who believes in the same thing come through and murder 10 people and walk out alive. of the fucking grocery store alive without a bruise without a, bruise, without a scratch without and, a... and it's funny because i'm not like clearly i'm against police brutality but i've seen way too many folks of darker skin complexion murdered for a lot just less. walking across yeah. the street oh my god Literally what was that one yet. boy's name he I had like the me. m&ms in his pocket is that the one in... no that was trayvon martin that was, was that the skittles in the okay. arizona t there was okay. another boy who and i mean I what about what the kid with name. the toy gun uh where the cop okay, didn't even stop like the car 12 he was like 12 or something yeah, yeah. And they just shot him sto- they killed him didn't even stop the car like the car was still rolling and before he even fully drew down, he was already shooting at the kid. Um, I just, I just wish there was like that, that twinge of patience and evaluation with everyone, like that, that half second of like, wow, I, how, like you hear shots are you, you're getting all type of calls. I can only imagine how many nine one one calls were made Wait, the there, moment yeah. the first shot was. So you know. You're going into a hot, off the charts, crazy, ridiculous situation, but yet you can somehow still have that peace of mind and self control to. Mm-hmm. And it's it's crazy because it's like, do I am I wishing death on this dude? But I just I don't get the I don't get how this is the same country. It's like it's playing with a different rubric, right? Like it's, like it, it's- that's exactly what it yeah. is. There you go. It's like, oh, well, what's that whole meme with Peter Griffin? Like, ah, he's okay, not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, yeah, and yeah. It, it, it seems like such a joke, but it is an entirely, it is such a reality that we live in. And it, it's so, these people are dead because of yeah. how. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. And media can't imagine has going to be punished. To the store. And and noticing that someone was hunting, hunting. Literally, what do you what do you what do you do in that situation? What do you what 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 do you do in that situation? You know you're gonna die. What do you do when you know you're gonna die? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I I am in no way saying that police brutality is whatever whatever. I don't think he should have walked out of that store. It that's what I'm. This is what I'm saying, right? Like I don't. Like I, he left ten. I don't understand there. how. I don't. Know I don't know how, how he, he that walks store. out. That's that. That's that's the ultimate thing for me. I don't understand how. And it makes the me angry how. that I have to feel like that. It yeah. makes me so angry that I that I'm like you shouldn't have walked. You should not be alive right now. I don't want to think that about anybody. Anybody. But it, 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 it literally like. You're out here hunting my people. What am I Literally. supposed to feel? Exactly. Once again, how do I get? And then we get chastised, right? Like you just yeah, like we well, get yeah. For I'm over here worried that. about saying that. I feel like there's no way. Yeah, I'm worried. Yeah, like, we're like, on here. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I shouldn't be saying this. I, yeah, but. yeah. And and it's 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 cr- like, why do I? Why do we as a people have to always play the the why do we as a people always have to play the um we always have you know to play nice, the, the high yeah we got to do the high cheating. road we we yeah. always have to and uh it, it's 
And it's crazy because so much of it is rooted in being safe. Yeah. It's so sad. Like, I think of Killer Mike and what he said. He was like, I want my mm-hmm. child to get home. Come home. Get home. We'll fight. We'll fight later. Get home. And that's, and it's, I'm getting goosebumps because it's, it's such a, re- like, just whatever you got to do. Kiss as much ass as you got to kiss. Um, you know, tuck your head a little bit. All, and it's funny because you hear some people and they're like, you know, no, walk proud, walk this. And I'm like, yeah, but I'd rather be able to walk in my door. Right. I have kids. I got, and it, it's so wild because it's like, well, you, you know, got to be a man. You, you know, you got to be strong. Shamed, right? It is. It's, it's, almost, it's, a sh- it's almost shaming that like yeah. you have to be this way because you want to, you want to show your full anger and your full range of emotion, and you should be allowed to. You should be allowed to, but they'll discredit you at every point. Oh. And if you show any kind of anger, that's aggression. And if you show oh. any kind of aggression, that leads to you might get I shot. Disagree. You might not make it home, or Th- even just is, fucking disagreeing. Like it, it's and that's and it's it's it's, it's so nuts. It's like okay. Um, I know, and I know for me, ultimately, I want to go home. Anybody who really knows me, my family, they'll tell you, like, Baron just want to go home. I want to go home. I want to get home. I want to be able to lay my head in my bed. I want to be able to see my kids. I want to be able to sit in my office. I So I'm going to do everything in my power to get home. But it's so sad that the basics, me, me being frustrated at, randomly out of 20 cars getting pulled over uh me seeing people who look like my family members getting murdered on tv um it and then seeing the killer walk out clean as a whistle like he just put the outfit on hair not frazzled the dude looked i was like wow he looks great look at the hell he looks fine like but yeah he just woke and, up and had a fresh cup yeah of yeah and i'm supposed to Oh, Keep your it, mouth shut. Be a good boy. Especially with how much in the last little while, like they've been emboldened, right? I mean, they think it's like Ooh, almost yeah. okay now, right? Oh, like yeah. it, it's it's like they they there's like a, a huge dichotomy of people now who like a feel like they can do it because oh look it's popular quote unquote again to be racist. It's cool like, to be edgy. Yeah, look at all these other racists out there. While at the same time knowing that they're going to get away with it, knowing that there's nothing that, that's going to happen to them. I mean, look at this fucking guy. So like looking up at like news stories. They had already, like, he, apparently he was, like, talking about how he'd, like, killed cats and stuff. And he was asking all these questions. Like, they, he was talking about an attack for weeks online. And it's just, like, how does this get by? Meanwhile, it's, like, somebody orders some fertilizer. And it's, like, you know, the a fucking FBI oh, is yeah. knocking down their door, right? Like, it's it's just, again, it's there's an obvious reason why they're not paying attention. There's an obvious reason why they're not looking or they're not listening. I mean, did you guys see that video that was going around Twitter the other day? about the uh the uber driver or the lyft driver the the fucking like two like he was a white guy driving an uber or lyft and he was picking people up and they got in the car and it was like a like a white couple and they're like oh thank god you're white and he was like what do you mean and they were like oh we thought you know it's just nice that you're white it's just like a normal guy and that's what that's the terminology that they use normal guy and he's like get out he's like get out and then obviously and obviously right away Right away, like he's, he's like, get out. I'm not driving you. He's like, that's so yeah. wrong. Get out. And then obviously right away, he, right away, they start, you know, cussing him out. And again, N-word lover. Like that's like, there was nothing, nothing was brought up. But that's the yeah. first thing that they went to after he was like, get out of my car. I'm not driving you. Which like, hey, kudos to that guy. Because that's the bare fucking minimum you should do in that yeah. situation. And like, like the video ends, but he said he was calling the cops and stuff. Lord knows what they were going to fucking do. But like again, like it, like it just seems like there's different games going on, and it's like you're you're fucked if you play, you're fucked if you don't. They've just never you know, cared. That's you know really so, what it is. You know what's so gross um, is uh, the fact that it isn't new; it's just more publicized. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh that that's the that's the, and then that's it being scary, as publicized right? as it is. Mm-hmm. It makes it that much worse because now you're you're engulfed in it. Um, I mean, I I still remember um the uh was uh don't let me butcher this lady's name the Aisha Miller situation. If you guys go look it up, that's like my city. Even uh 
Al Sharpton. I got friends who were like in the marches. You can see like little kids. We were all kids at the time. Like I wasn't a part. I wasn't in it, but I got friends who were, you know, like you can, it, it's crazy. You go and look at all the news clips and whatnot. You'll see people. I'm like, oh, but it's not new. No. That, that's the, and then what, what even makes it kind of, not kind of scary. What makes it scary is folks are bold enough to do it and live stream it. Let me just, yeah. let me not even try to hide what's going on. Right. Let me just outright put my entire family lineage on the line here and do it for the gram. Like, yeah. what? And, and you know what's, okay, ooh, ooh, and I'm gonna shut up. The Stockholm Syndrome of this place. I always said the U.S., the best thing about the U.S., the best thing about the U.S. is its marketing. I am terrified to go live anywhere else. And I I don't think I've ever said that on camera. I'm terrified to go live anywhere else. I understand that. What? How can you just give, just sit here and talk for 30 minutes about all it is and then still with a straight face? You don't know anything else. And you then don't the marketing. You know anything else, right? The like, everywhere know, right? else. Yeah. And then they make everything else sound so... This is the best place. This is so... where dream, the American dream. You know what to and, expect here, right? Like, yeah. it's not... It's it's familiar. Yeah. And I, this is why it's so crazy. I follow a lot of different black travel groups and uh, travel sites and whatnot and people centered around black travel, black expats and whatnot. Because just to mentally familiarize myself, and it, the funny, the saddest, funniest thing I ever heard was, "Well, don't worry about it. Like you survived the U.S. Like just take that same anything you did yes. to survive. Like just take that over. There. You'll yes. know. And, and and you, it's so crazy when I see people who move around and they just do things. Like I, I've, it, it's funny. I, I've never hated white people right but i've always been envious and the envy is the blending the ability to just go and do go anywhere yeah go anywhere anywhere. it doesn't matter just about any country just about any city any store you can come into the roughest part of any of my neighborhoods and you're you're almost like you blend and it just i've that's what i've always wanted to experience because i know Anywhere I go, I'm always, for the most part, standing out. Yeah, I've always known that. That's always been a reality. You grow up knowing that because, like, yeah. you literally have people in the United States, like white people in the United States, who have never seen a black person in. Real oh yeah, life. yeah. But for black people, that's not a thing. It's not a thing. I, well, I, mean, I always have. That's even a thing in, in like up in Canada. I mean, I went to university with people who were like, I met like my first brown friend here at university, and it's just like, I don't know what yeah. to tell you. It's it's wild. It's it's it, definitely wild. But I feel you, Baron, because there there's certain yeah. places I don't want to go, right? But I definitely want to get the fuck up out of here. And that's, I don't know where I'm gonna go, but I definitely want to get the fuck up out of the U.S. because I think about having, like, if I were to have kids, if I were to have a son, and it just how dangerous it is for him to just be walking down the street, like that. That literally, like, when that happened, I think it was in my early 30s, and I was like, I don't know if I want to have kids. I don't know if I want to have kids with anyone because no matter who I have kids with, that child's going to pick up some of my skin tone and is going to be perceived as black. And that made me so sad because I always wanted to be a mom. But now I don't know if this environment that I grew up thinking was okay is conducive to raising a child. If I have to worry every day that you go out, that you might not make it home, it's not worth it. Uh, And as a a father, two little, soon to be three little chocolate girls, it's... um, Wait, what? Hold on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just slide that in. What? Oh, I thought I told you guys. I'm so sorry. No! Yeah, I'm, 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 what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so Man, sorry. Congratulations! <laughs> Dude, holy shit. Thank you. I, I was like, I, do I, I just... interrupt? I don't know if I should interrupt right now, but I'm really so sorry. Yeah. Hell yeah! I'm Dude, so sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, to wrote this. What yeah. are you apologizing yeah. for? Fuck that. That's like the one highlight of this whole thing. Yeah. Right. Jesus. Right. Yeah. 
another little baby's on the way. She'll be here in September. Oh my um, god, that's so congrats, soon! Baby. Yeah, it's around the corner, dude. Oh, uh, little corner. Matilda. Oh, wait, Dallas just had his right. baby. Oh, oh my god, dude, next is it, gonna it, be Matt. Ooh. Yo, I, yo, I'll name my kid regardless, Baron or Baroness. If you name them Matilda, <laughs> my family would kill me. Yo, we would both be dead. We would both be dead. We would both be dead. I would not no, do that. So- so my grandmother, she she looked me in the face and said, you're going to have five girls. You're not going to have any sons. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, at first, I was a little like, oh, that sucks. Because I had a whole list of like boy names. Mm-hmm. Like um, I had. Um, uh, Don't say like, them. Don't most... say them. Don't say them. Don't say them. Okay. Okay. You might. You never know, dude. You never knew. You, yeah, them. that's I, true. I, you never back know. Pocket. Keep in your wow, back she pocket. She looked you know. dead in your eye okay. and was like, you're going to have five girls. You're on number three. I'm on. I'm on my third girl. It, That's it, a it, good it, thing. I I think think oh no! Random tangent. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I no, was, was going to say, say random. <laughs> I, I love was it. Gonna say random tangent. <laughs> Baron, go. I was just go. No, I'm going. Matt, damn. Okay, Luke, I was go. just gonna say. Oh God. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say random tangent. Um, My Spanish teacher, rest in peace, uh, read my tarot cards um, when I was like, I don't know, like 16 or something. And he was like, you're either going to have a lot of kids or a lot of lovers. And I was like, a lot of lovers. I'm going to have kids. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you may go, Baron. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you this. The one thing, um, it, it's just so funny because I'm like surrounded by women, right? And and the one thing that completely threw me off is just how they're little women from the beginning. Yeah, we are from the beginning, and I just yeah. look and I'm like, wow, dude, like this is so. I wouldn't know what to do with a boy. Honestly, I'm scared. I'm scared now to have a little boy. I wouldn't even know what to do. And right, you got like, two more I, girls to go before you start worrying about that. Don't worry. I know you have uh-huh. two more girls. I always wanted Dude, boys, to be I always honest. Wanted girls. I always this, wanted girls. That's I always wanted girls. That's what yeah. we thought, right? We were like, oh, you know, we want all boys. My, my wife, like, she's a tomboy. She, all the tools in the house are hers. Like, my brother needs to bring back. Her, her, uh, her drill. Her and... Listen, don't no, <laughs> no, don't play, don't play like you know what those tools are called. That's what that <laughs> was. No, that's that's... what that was. No, but I don't. You, you see me struggling. I don't either. Like my, I don't either. my dad will saying. call me and be like, "Hey, ask your wife if she has a, a pre-drill for it. whatever, whatever." And I'm it. like, "Oh, you okay? Oh, it sweet hurts. baby. Oh no, oh, you okay? What'd you do?" She's so slap cute too. Bitch. Oh, you're at daycare. Did oh, you just okay. say slap the bitch? You're Maybe. so dumb. Oh my god. I saw a TV. Oh, okay. It hurt me. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, so I, yeah. Um. No, I understand. Do you need a, you need a sec? I get it. No, 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 no. Okay. So. Look, she just wanted to be here. Like that's Aww, really what that was. I love yeah. it. Hi, little one. Daddy's girl. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh my god, Barry. Oh my kids god, are so, so cute. cute. Jesus. Oh right, my god. My, oh, she knows it too. She um, knows it. That, she that's like, the. Oh, they they know they know. That's Dad. why I can't have girls. There would be too much competition and attitude. Oh, oh. Now. <laughs> and then this one. Oh, Dad, can we just, can we watch Daddy? Can we watch anime? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So my okay. So my my child care provider. So, super side story. Super side story. We love super side. Ch- That's what we do here, right? My my child care provider. It, it's pretty dope. It's a black family. Shout out to them. I love them. And they. So my kids they weren't talking very well and they were like oh we watch anime we watch a lot of anime 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 they thought they were that we were watching what's love got to do with it on repeat oh because her name is anime anime you know, anim- <laughs> okay you guys know what that movie is right 
It's yeah. the one with, about Tina Turner. Tina and Turner. Turner. Yep. Do you know? Yeah. Do you want to know the only reason I know D is because one time when we were driving to Costco, we were listening to J Cole, and I thought they were talking about anime, and yes! then you're like, and you're like, no, let me explain this to you. So now I know why. <laughs> I because I was also thinking that. anime. Because like we were in the car and you're like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, it's cool Jekyll is watches anime too. You're like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I god, I forgot about that. Yeah. That was a, such a long time ago. Yeah, and I explained it, it to you. The mm-hmm. cake scene. Oh, really? Eat cake anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so that's yeah, oh, it's horrible. Horrible. But yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Bring it back. back. Um, no. Uh, yes, baby. Yeah, go ahead. Please do. Um, <laughs> this this how they okay. So the older one sent in the younger one. All of this was to so they could watch TV. That's what all of this was about. All that whole they know, was. man. We be planning, dude. Doing. We be planning. That's how you do. It. I used to do that to my little brother. Super side oh. note: my brother used to like do stupid stuff all the time, and I would catch him. So like he would like stick his finger, like lick his finger and stick it in the sugar, which is disgusting. And I would catch yeah. him and I'd be like, ooh, I'm telling. And he was like, no, 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 tell. I would literally write out contracts and make him sign it for stuff that he had <laughs> With to the do sugar for finger? Me. With the sugar <laughs> finger. And be like, all right, you have to do this for me for sticky. a week. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, yeah. Hunter, oh, Hunter, oh. He hates me. Well, I don't know why. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, torture. He's but, like, he like sits at home. My dad's like, I have my own sugar pot that I stick my. Oh my god, in he like used to time. get so mad at me. Like, um, another random note: my dad would not let him open Christmas presents until I woke up, and I like to sleep in. And my dad you? would be like, "You can't no. make." Yeah, yeah, I'm right, right, right. Um, so my dad would be like, "You can't open anything until Destiny wakes up." So my brother would get up super early and excited, like you know like eight but my dad actually did this because he also did not want to be awake at this time right so then i would <laughs> i would get up at like 10 or 11 it didn't matter how late or how early i went to bed and then my brother was allowed to open his presents once i woke up he would just be sitting there Phew. oh you guys tortured each other didn't i would have woken your ass up no you would have gotten in trouble my dad would have like beat the shit oh. out of you <laughs> he was like i would have let you sleep <laughs> yeah. no no okay my dad didn't beat us but you know what i mean like no, I got you. Oh no, I, I got you. You understand. Yeah. You understand. Okay. I definitely understand. <laughs> um, it, it, gosh, man, ain't it crazy how we can like just we flip? just know and flip, yeah, it, right? Like, yeah, that's how normalized this is. And that's what's sad that we can that's talk about this part. conversation, flip to something funny, and then go back to it because it is so normal right yeah. now it's just part of our everyday life like us fearing for our lives us seeing a cop drive by a cop being behind us oh like that Lord. fear my stomach drops every time like i just robbed a bank listen i'm just coming That's from what like the dollar I, store I do nothing. I and i'm like nothing. i'm scared because you know that like it's it's all based on their mood which is really really scary like if they're having a bad day you might end up having a bad fucking day it has nothing to do with you. And so like when people are like, oh, you just got to listen to him. You just got to follow them. If they read any kind of attitude, because they already perceive the black women and black men have an attitude. Especially black women. They if I just say ready. like, can you get your license? Hold on just a second. I just need to get it. He could perceive that as like, don't talk back to me. Yeah. Why are you giving me attitude? Get out of the car. Yeah. And I'm going to just be real with y'all. Sometimes it's really hard for me not to show attitude when somebody is doing something very stupid. Like it's on my face. And I don't even realize it. It's on, it's on my face. Do you know what I mean? But why can't you? Yeah. But no, but But why why can't can't I be annoyed? Mm -hmm. Why do I have to fear for my life? Mm -hmm. What? Like you pulled me over. Of course I'm annoyed. Of course I'm frazzled, but I have to pretend to be okay with it and happy and like hi good day okay. officer is there anything i need to do like i'm, I'm sorry yeah. like I'm fucking stupid i just i would like to be able to use the full range of our emotions without worrying about and it's crazy because it's not even like i'm asking to go and break something i'm not asking to go and hurt somebody i'm literally just hey i am completely frustrated because the situation is completely wrong in my direction, but I have to right. be, I have to be calm to make sure it's 
resolved in a better way for me, even though I was the one wronged. Yeah. Like I have to do the coaxing and the, oh, it's okay. Every time I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I'm like, no, it's not okay. But the moment I start, you know, getting my Jerry Seinfeld on, it, it's. Uh. Well, I think what we need and what we probably won't get is like the same amount of respect that white peers give each other. And I think that is the bottom line is that they don't respect us. And I'm, and again, that's not a blanket statement. There are some wonderful white people out there I am friends with and they have been pushing to use their platforms to talk about the injustices. And I love you guys for that. I love mm-hmm. like you retweeting. I love you doing whatever you can, because like I said, we, you are white people are more willing to listen to white people before they are willing to listen to us. And that has just been proven multiple times throughout history. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. civil rights didn't get done. Civil until... rights. Like you yeah. literally had Martin Luther King, you had Malcolm X, you had mm. the Black Panther Party, you had None all of, of these amazing voices cared. until white people decided, like, okay, maybe yeah. we should do something about yeah. this. That's the all and a lot of people don't like to admit that. A lot of people do not uh, the first person I heard outwardly say that. Uh, was like KRS one in a random mm-hmm. like kitchen, it, like somebody just had a camera on him. He was like, "You got to understand that as black people, we're not, there's not enough of us to really move the needle. There is not politically, like said, there's, there's not. not enough. There's not enough of us. And, and people I really, still like think it's like half and half, which is th- no. that's why like his idea that black yeah, people made no or sense. people are color. I was like, have you looked at a fucking graph, homie? Have you walked We're like thirteen <laughs> percent. We're like, like fucking thirteen percent. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, just go come outside. on. <laughs> like, go to your downtown area. Go and it's go the anywhere. brainwashing. It's the it's the bullshit mm-hmm. brainwashing, and that's what makes it so fucking scary because it's not logical. These people are acting on emotion. They're acting on a fear that has been deep rooted since before slavery. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and then he's not the only one. Literally the next day there was a shooting yeah the next day somebody ran into a church what was this guy i don't know i think he's in illinois and it totally blew my mind because i didn't think somebody running for office in illinois would literally have like an ad like this but he was just like um and i'm paraphrasing of course but do you do you not like mexicans do people think you're racist for your beliefs basically everything he said was geared towards not letting Mexicans into Illinois. And I was just like, how many Mexicans are going to Illinois to where? And then he was like, it was it was just mind blowing. And he won. He won his candidacy. Whatever, whatever he was running for, he actually won it. And like, I don't know if you guys know geography. I'm sure you do. But do you know how far fucking Illinois is from Mexico, do you know how many states you have to go through to get to Illinois? Nobody is risking their life to get to Illinois. That is all I'm saying. And his whole campaign was about that and then bringing COVID and that his mother got sick and nobody should grow up being an orphan. It was literally, it was like so much garbage and bullshit and he won. And that is why I am trying to get the fuck up out of the United States before the next election because it is going to be ridiculous. And like you said, there are not enough of us. There are not enough of us. And I care about, I care about my brothers, my sisters, my family. I care about my friends. But at this point, I feel like I have to do what's best for me. And if I have the means to get out, I am going to get out. And if you have the means to get out, I would advise you to get out. Yeah. I, because it is going to get worse before it gets better. And this election has pissed a lot of white people off. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's like, you're not just worried about the color of your skin. Tea. You're also worried about you as a woman and everything oh. that comes with. Right? Oh I mean, like, it's, it's such... 
like i don't know like i mean like we already like you already mentioned d that you know you're looking to get out you're looking to you know lord knows where but to, to better pastor us hopefully i mean like baron would, would you ever leave like would you ever take your family and be like we're out like again r- yeah, resources yeah. and everything else considered yeah, yeah, yeah. right but like if if it, it's so crazy i legit was just talking before before even getting a message to come on today's show i um i was just talking to my wife and i was like man if we didn't have you know certain debt over our head and like my wife getting her licensure and everything, you know, she's a therapist and she's almost done with that. I was like, honestly, I would want you to just get certified in somewhere else. And we go even, you know, it's crazy for the bare essentials of going somewhere and not having to worry about going in complete debt because I had to go to the emergency room. Mm-hmm. Let's not even go like, even outside yeah. of everything else, just the simple thought. Like I remember, I had to go to the emergency room like four years ago. Thank God I got good insurance because the bill was forty grand. <sighs> they gave me saline and a pill, and I was in there for three Fuck. hours. Yeah, it's fluids. This is not a good place to be. And a pill, and the pill is a cheap one. It was metformin, um, and the bill was like forty grand. Like that would have, if I didn't have insurance, that would have crippled my family. Yeah, for good, forty for, grand would cripple a lot of fucking people. Yeah, that, this, but Most this is people. what I'm, but this is what I'm saying. Or don't even get me started on. I think it's around. It was around thirty seven thousand, just to give birth to my kid. Each kid, I want to say it was like thirty seven. Because thank it's God, ridiculous. my wife is a trooper. She's a warrior. No meds. Like she just, I don't even push that. That was on her. Uh, Cause I would definitely be fully medicated from the I eyeballs would down. Give me all, um, <laughs> give me all the drugs. Like I put me to sleep. Down. Like I, she's wake me trooper. up when it, wake I, me up when it's over. Yeah, yeah like I, wait with the man, cause dude, that would definitely slow down birth rate if we had to hold up like seahorses. But that's another thing that's scary though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you just slide that through. He did. He was like also. The um yeah. the the death rate of black mothers giving oh. birth is twice that of white mothers. I like, had to and, go, and we go ahead. I had to. I'm so sorry to cut you off, but no, I no, remember no. I had to go and tell the doctors like, "Hey, I I don't want to sound like I know what I'm talking about, but my wife, I think she's in the second stage of of uh, birth, and she's supposed to be pushing." And they're kind of like looking at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, I you know, I got so good. I had the app out and I'm looking at the machine. I, w- I got to a point where I was calling her contraction. She was pissed. She was absolutely pissed at me. But I totally nerded out in there. I was like, oh, so now it's starting to be one minute intervals. <laughs> and then she's in the whatever <laughs> phase. She, you know what? yeah. she should be happy that you did that because literally like the, one she of the stories really I got read, hurt. she could have mm. really got hurt. He They went in. This was her second child. Um, and she was in a lot of pain and she ended up bleeding out. And he had called the nurses several times and they let that woman bleed out. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. It's like the archaic yeah. fucking things that they still believe in because of what they did to black women who were slaves without anesthesia, without any of those things, just operating and experimenting on us. You know what? The lack of proximity. I, I it, It's crazy. It's hard to... This has always been my theory. I, I don't think I've ever said this. I'll, it's crazy how much conversation black folks have outside of not being on camera. There's mm. like a whole tribunal that goes on. Like it, it's like small meetings that the community yep. has that nobody knows about. Um, and it's what's crazy is proximity. I've always I never. It took me a long time. I didn't understand. I'm like, why is it that it, every other group of people gets catered to, whether it's you know, physical, emotional, whatever, law, like things happen. And I was like, it's because most people don't interact with black folks. It, we're we're still, true. it's the same way people talk about the indigenous community. Like they're yeah. non-existent. Like, I, it, it's funny, you know, for me, I'll tell people, I was like, oh yeah, it's my tribe. They're like, your tribe. And I'm like, yeah, you're native? And I'm like, yeah. Like, we're real, we exist. But with, it's, it's hard to connect with what you don't see and interact with. It's hard to feel, it's hard to feel bad when it's just such a disconnect. 
then right. that's when they always try to do the whole like, oh, well, we're all American. It's like, no, yeah. no all lives no, matter, all that yeah. bullshit. No, you don't. You don't really believe that because a lot of things would be across the board, and a lot of things you wouldn't be okay with. Yeah. Um, they don't want to because it's happening their comfort to a fa- zone. Yeah, they don't want to step th- outside their comfort zone. And I always say, it's I was like, you know, exactly. And then it's hard. To, it's hard to feel bad for somebody outside of your reach. Yep. It, it really it's hard to connect. But then, you know, um, I remember, you know, it, it's horrible what's going on in Ukraine. Right. I remember seeing all the emotion around the old people holding their uh, their bags and walking, trying to get to safety. And it was just like a whole nationwide in the U.S. Like, oh, yeah. They were all crying. Yeah. I, that, and, I got and upset I was, when I found out how they were doing black people over there, though. Right. No, but check this out. I was like, it's because they could see themselves or somebody they know. And yes, love that's another in white that person. person dealing with some shit. And I'm a white person. And if I was in that situation, they look like I my grandmother. They yeah, look they look like, like my... and that's exactly yeah. why they're allowed to be upset. They're allowed to feel all those emotions. But then when we have and this is like coming full circle, when yeah. we see people who look like us or look like family members and we react, oh, they're just angry. Oh, they're over. Yeah. Why are you? Yeah. What's the difference in you seeing someone dying in another country that you've never met and a language you never you don't know how to speak versus me being upset that you just killed somebody in a state right above right us? Yeah. Right there. I have family mm-hmm. that lives in New York. Same here. Like and it it, it but that but that's the Like, holy crap. And then I, I think of, uh, I, oh my God, I can't believe the poet's name, uh, uh, James Baldwin. Um, and hearing him say how it was better to be broke in France than to be here in the U.S. Like, I, I, just hear, like hearing his, he was like, nothing, the worst thing that happened to me over there is a thousand times better than what I experienced. Yeah, it's true. Here. So and many just black like... people moved to France because they were treated more fairly, because they got like a lot more respect over there. It, it just, just being human. I, I, just I'm, being human. A friend of mine, much love to Andre. Uh, I believe he's still a professor over in Chicago, but he he was down in uh, I don't know if he was in South Africa or one of the Southern African countries. He was down there for like six months. He said he's never felt so comfortable in his life. He's never felt, and crazy at enough, peace. the closest f- at peace. The closest, I, and it's funny, the closest I've ever felt to that is in Alabama, and that's just because of how naturally segregated it is. Yeah, like you just in a certain part of town, and it's just like this is just black people feel like, and this is where we're at, and we know like we're we're here, and it just it, it's a it's such a trip. It's a trip to feel human, like, and not have to, not have to act a different way because yeah, to be able to just be, to just be, to just be. I think the closest I ever got to that was in South Korea because the few black people who were over there made a conscious effort to get together, Uh, uh. right? So it was like, and then I know, like, when Matt moved, he was like, "You never hang out with people after work." And and it was literally because I have to deal with white people all day long, and the microaggressions, all the the day long, yes, the poking, and I just can't the prodding, be. and the, yeah, I just can't yeah. be, and it, it would irritate me. And I've talked about it before. I would see our coworkers, most were white males, get away with shit that I never would have gotten away with absolutely never would have gotten away with Uh and that was like ooh, that fucking burned me up so then who can i talk to about that like i can't sit there and talk to all my you know what i mean like i can't be angry oh you're just overreacting oh it's not a big deal which pisses me off even more so then the only place that i feel like i could bitch about it was with that group of black people yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that, oh yeah. And no. I wish I mean like I would bitch to Matt about it and stuff. And yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. Really fucked up because um, I remember there was an incident where like I had been working. Listen, I had been working at this job for fucking ever. All right, to the point Years. where they were like, 
we want you to be academic coordinator to the point where they had me being an academic coordinator and still teaching full time, which was a lot, right? I Oof. didn't want to do it. So in order, when I was asked to sign back on, I was like, I'm only going to stay for six more months. This is before COVID like shit hit the fan. I'm only going to stay for six more months. But if I stay for that six months, I still want, because if you finish your contract, you get like a, a payout, right? So gotcha. I was like, I just want half of that, right? And she's like, oh yeah, okay, no problem. Listen, I had to ask for it. Matt, I talked Matt into staying six more months. She was just going to give it to him. She wanted to negotiate with me. Let me tell you what this bitch did. She literally suggested, how about I pay you a little bit less every month so that at the end of six months, you'll have that. But you you wouldn't even have the gall to do that with anybody else. No. You wouldn't even. She, wouldn't even, she didn't that even ask even... Matt. No, she just was like, yeah, we'll give it to you. Matt didn't even yeah. have to ask. Listen. Yeah. She about yeah. caught hands. And that is the kind of shit that pisses me off. And it, I have to be professional about it. I have to and be professional happens. when it's like, that's oh. fucking insulting. Are you kidding me? He's been here for two years. Not not that Matt's not a great teacher. He's an absolute no, no, amazing teacher. He's been here for fucking two years. And I've been busting my ass here for four years to the point where you want me to manage all the other teachers, but you don't want to fucking pay me? I had to learn... Um... And it, it's funny, especially when you deal with places that are like really not so corporate. They're, anytime it's not extremely corporate, you're dealing with nepotism on a high, very high level. Mm-hmm. Um, like as soon as it's not big name, big brand, big box store, you're dealing with extreme amounts of nepotism. Um, I, I technically work for my family and it's my like my tribe. We're all related some way, shape or form. Um but if you're not like the right branch of the family, like that whole like clan, family tree stuff, mm-hmm. branch family, that stuff is very real. Yeah. Um, like there was a point where my family was in charge for a bit and nobody wanted to hire me because they thought I was going to be reporting in to their boss's boss, who mm-hmm. was my uncle. Mm-hmm. And it, just, it, it gets so crazy. But I quickly learned that no matter how polite I am, no matter how uh, well-dressed I am, no matter how professional I am, all of that is still, it's good and all, and it's stuff I do because I just like to present myself in a certain way. But I'm still just a black man at the office. Yes. And, and I, I learned that too, like the hard way. Like, yeah, I would go out of my way. I would say, oh. and Matt, oh, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, I would say I was probably one of the hardest working people in that office. You were the hardest working person in that office. Forget I believe one it. of you. I believe you it. were the A hardest working person in that office. And then, I mean, like on top of busting your ass to, but for the work that you did, because at the end of the day, regardless of how you felt about the administration, you were there for the kids to be able to teach them and to be able to help you know, guide them in a way that only you could because the way that you did it was the best. And you still had to fucking worry about how other people looked at you. You still had to fucking worry about how you were acting. You were still worried about, Matt, am I being too much of a bitch? When it's just like, fuck no. Like, you can't even and, have and a bad that, day. I'm always that's worried what, about that's that. What, and I that's what I mean. You can't even right? have a bad day. You can't and even that's have exactly a bad day. Can't have, that's exactly it. But Matt has always been like super. And you know what? I didn't even realize that. I'm still that way with Matt. And I, I'll, I'll type something out and I'm like, is this coming across too angry? I'm, I'm worried that this is coming across too angry. And it's just me speaking plainly. And I realize even just me speaking plainly, people think I have an attitude because when I'm talking business, I'm not like, I'm talking business. Oh, ex- Dude, look how we had to, look how long it took us to warm up to even feel comfortable talking about what was going on today and current events. Like yeah. it. And that's the overall of what I'm talking about. Like, and it's so crazy that it's one, it's not new. And it, it, and it sucks that it's not on us to fix it. It sucks. We would have already fixed it. We would have already already fucking fixed it. And and the thing is, is that black people don't even uh, want revenge. No. We just just Uh, want respect and we just want to survive i just want to we be, just want to be happy 
I just want to exist. That's it. I want to. Be- We're not trying to go out here and like start the next revolution or anything no. like that. Just and nope. anytime we're mad, it's because of some shit that's been done to us. It's always reactionary. It's yep. always reactionary. And this is what I want to explain really quickly. There's a difference between prejudice and racism. Okay, and a lot of people don't understand that. And I'm going to tell you right now why black people cannot be racist. Black people do not have a disagreement with white people because of the tone of their skin. Their disagreement, their hatred, their anger all comes from how they have been treated throughout history. It has nothing to do. Yes. And currently it has nothing to do. If, if a black person looks at you a type of way and you're a white male, it is because of some shit that has happened. It is not because of your skin. So the difference is, is you literally have people and bringing it full circle. This white man, 18 years old, went up and murdered 10 black people for the sake of their skin tone because he believed in some fucked up way that we were taking over. And all they were doing was going grocery shopping and minding their own fucking business. Yep. And that is the difference between a racist and somebody who's prejudiced. And I just want people to understand that they're not the same. They come from very different places in you. It, it, it's crazy. It, 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 it's, it should scare folks that you got a whole group of people who aren't actively seeking revenge. <laughs> like, like any... Anywhere else. it's so crazy because you know you know you know it always throws me off how you you throw a little uh, mythology in it you throw a little fiction in it and all of a sudden you can understand you can right. feel bad for the aliens in Avatar you could oh feel my bad God. for like you like I mean you could write thought pieces on it and explain mm-hmm. it and sit and stand and defend people it people were literally depressed they had like a name for it people were depressed when that movie came out yeah. because of what they did and I was like they literally did that to the native americans and 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 where where's the tears where where's where's the feeling you're crying over blue people that aren't fucking real exposure and interaction that exposure and interaction it, it and it's sad like i just finished watching true blood again yeah the ending is still bad um but it, it it's it's sad that it's almost like you're, we're going to need some type of like for every so many group of people, here's a black person that you can interact with. because And that's what they did in True Blood, for those who don't know. Super spoiler alert, but the yeah. show's over 10 years mm-hmm. old. Um, but they literally did a, a vampire to every human. Um, because that it's sad. Like, I look at... It, it's, it took me so long to understand it because I used to really not... I used to be extremely frustrated about it. And I'm like, okay, oh, well, it's easy to pass. Not easy, but laws and things change for the lgbtq community a lot quicker than for the black community because most people know someone and interact with and have love for someone also who is lgbtq who is yeah no but but that's what i'm saying it's the proximity and interaction Mm -hmm. but not everybody knows somebody who's black Mm -hmm. like there's i had to learn to stop arguing people because i used to love it i used to get on facebook oh there we go it's time whoo I had to learn to stop arguing with people. I would go to people's pictures. As creepy as it sounds, I'm like, every picture I see, you have no diversity in any way. Oh my God. I do the same thing. If I'm on a dating app. And I stop talking. Yeah. And I stop. Yeah. Yeah, If I'm on a dating app and like all your, you have pictures with people, but all of the people are white. Every event you go to, everything you're at, everything you do. That sounds really fucked up. But if you don't have people of color in your circle, it makes me uncomfortable. And, and it's, and you know, what's crazy. It's for me, it's not even a thing of, it's just, I can't expect you to understand. I can't, I can't have a baseline of understanding. But they expect us to understand that part. And then that's where the, and that's where it all comes back. God. (sighs) Thank you guys for letting okay. me in. This felt good. No, thank you for coming on because I couldn't have done this without you. And I really appreciate you coming on because I was I was really scared that I was just going to be crying the whole time. 
And um, anyway, I see. I'm. I was about to be like, I don't want our listeners to think I'm angry. And da, 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 da. no, we I are am angry. angry. I'm angry. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. And like, listen, if you're offended by this, there's something wrong with you because yeah. we are obviously angry at a specific group of individuals who continue mm-hmm. to fuck us over. It's, oh, it's, over, we know it's not everybody. Over. We know it's not everybody. It's a specific group of white men and white women who continue to use, use and abuse their power to keep others down. And that's who we're talking about. That's mm-hmm. who we're angry with. Um, and I just want to make that clear and I shouldn't have to make that clear, but I'm making it clear because I don't want a bunch of bullshit and a bunch of people giving us a lot of stuff. This is, it's a hard topic to talk about, but like I said, it's something that we needed to talk about because Mm -hmm. I come on here every week, a couple of times a week, and I'm a black woman and to be here and to act like this didn't affect me or this doesn't affect me would have been a disservice to those who I love and care about. And I'll take that a step further and say that, like, if you can't listen to a show like this and at least try to come from a place of understanding, and if you don't, like, like Varen mentioned, if you, for whatever reason, have not had the opportunity to interact with people who are unlike yourself, then take this as an opportunity to listen and to learn and to maybe experience something that might put, that might make you uncomfortable, that might make you feel some type of way. But if you're not even, even trying to understand, then don't come back because you're not wanted here like let the door hit you on your way out if if the only thing is that you're doing is listening to this and getting upset find another find another podcast find another place to exist in because that's not what yeah. we are here i want in, in the oh go ahead i'm so sorry, sorry I'm, yeah i wanted to jump in quickly um uh i was thinking about how to approach this episode um being that i'm not a person of color and i'm not american uh granted i am close to where this happened i live in st Catharines, ontario uh, it's about 40 minutes from Buffalo. Um, and I thought, you know, I had things I wanted to mention. I had things I wanted to 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 bring up. But I thought the best way, I think, for me to approach this would just be to listen, which is, I think, something that people who look like me need to do more um, when it comes to these, these issues. Um, so that's why I've been silent for the last hour and 10 minutes. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and then secondly, you know, the, the, uh, the onion, uh, is a, is a news network, a satirical news network, and they have a great headline that goes out whenever something like this happens. And granted, it's not, you know, there's the, there's the hate crime aspect of this. There's also the gun control aspect. Um, and the, the headline goes, quote, uh, nothing could be done about this says country where this says the only country where this regularly happens. Um, I don't think it, you know, there, yeah, it's a very unique situation that I feel, um, okay, baby, baby, both, something in a second. I feel, I feel like, what could I possibly have to say about this? Um, being that I feel so far removed from it and yet it's, it's such a, a commonplace thing so close to me. Um, you know, I just, yeah, I'm, it, it leaves me at a loss for words. Um, so that's why I wanted to take this opportunity and just, and just listen for, for a while and, and, and hear what everyone had to say. So I appreciate uh, being on here with you and I appreciate everything that you've said. And I agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment. Um, but yeah, something's, something has to give. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Leo. Seriously. And And it's better to be honest about it, right? It's better to honest and communicate that, right? Like. I mean, it wasn't easy when we first started. Yeah, it wasn't easy when we first started having these conversations. I found myself in your position often, Lou. Like, it was just like, how do I approach this? And it's, you know, through having these conversations and through being here and through growing with Destiny for the last few years now, right? It's just, you have to start with listening, right? I think the best thing you can do is take away that narrative where you're like, I'm a white person, so I really don't have anything to say on it because we need you to speak more than you know more than you know more than you know and i definitely i feel that everybody not everybody but a lot of people know the difference between what right and wrong oh yeah you can feel it and if you see 
even if you were just to like post and be like, that was fucked up. What happened in Buffalo was fucked up. Just saying it, just having enough people saying it is important. Even if you can't physically do anything, if, even if you're, a, let's say that you're a white person and you live in a predominantly white town, there's nobody you can talk to about it. Just speaking up is enough. Now, I will say this. If you're in a very racist white town, you need to take care of yourself first. And if oh, speaking yeah, up puts you in any kind of danger, do not do it. I don't want anybody getting hurt out here um, to protect us because we're going to fight regardless. But if you can speak up, if you can say that something is wrong, regardless if like it's happening in your country, regardless of it, I mean, like if the whole world can fucking cry for Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. Then we can cry and speak up for the yeah. things that are happening here, no matter how commonplace it is. The cry louder. We literally have people yeah. donating hundreds and Millions. thousands of dollars because Notre Dame was falling down. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. A fucking oh. building. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 You, you can speak up about the tragedies oh, that are yeah. happening to people of color here. in the US. You absolutely can. Don't wow. ever feel like you can't. Don't feel like because you're a white male that you can't. I am telling you right now, I will speak on behalf of all black people. I don't care what they say. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate every person who stands up for us, regardless of color. You're absolutely right. And, um, you know, I haven't posted about it and I'm going to as soon as we're done this uh, this podcast here. Um, and Action. one other thing I, I was thinking about was, you know, one of the worst things I'm sure that happens in each person of color's lived experience is when they experience racism. And funnily enough, you know, one of the worst things about being um, a white person is is the racism. And it's, it's different because I've been in situations and I'm sure Matt, you've been in situations as, as well where another white person has been racist to you, not as an attack to you, but as though this is, this is okay. Yeah. Or, um, you know, this is common. This, yeah. We can, we could talk about this amongst us whites. Like, you know, it's like, it's, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and that's scary. Cause it's, it's like this really ugly, hateful, thing and idea and and sentiment is being brought forward as though it's benign um mm -hmm. and that's that's scary yeah and i this is like um and i've said this not on this show but we want to have families we want to have friends we want to be able to go out to eat we want to um all the positive things most people want that includes us. Without fear. <laughs> yeah, like that Without that includes fear. us. That's what we, and it because, you know, just know like there's not like some secret mind shift going on just because we're black. Like, no, we we want to be able to feed our families. We want to be able to provide. We want to be able to enjoy the luxuries of life. Um we want to be able to go to the beach. We want to be able to go to the mall. We want to, be able we want to, to like, do the same shit that you do that you don't even think about doing because you just it's do just it. So yeah, it's it's like, just so natural to do. I want to be able right? to complain about my food not being prepared right without it becoming a scene. I want to be able yeah. to like, and and it's it's funny. I I am worried about complaining about my food not being prepared properly. Like, but you're paying them to prepare your food properly. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it, it, it's it, wild. It it is it, absolutely wild. And we just want the basic access to our full range of emotions. We we're human. We're human. And I think the one thing that, like, I don't know, really stayed with me so far in this episode. I mean, like, I I feel like every time. And I, I say, unfortunately, we have to do an episode like this, but I hope I communicate that properly. Like, I, I wish we didn't have to. But, like, the fact, I, I the thing that I, I really hope and, and you know, we'll, we'll keep striving for, right, is that you feel at peace, right? The fact that you both had a moment 
you had like a thought of being like this was a time where i felt like i didn't have to think to constantly be on guard to to be ever present in every reaction in every situation be it at wherever you are that's fucking ridiculous and i i hope that you know we can look at a day and a time that that's normal if that makes why? sense why no you and you know what's so crazy i i I don't have any data behind this, but it would not shock me if a majority of black folks are want to remote work. Oh, I don't yeah. ever want to go. I don't Probably. ever want to go back to an office. Yeah, no, I am very excited about not going into the office. I don't ever want to go back to an office. Like that's why it took me so long to find a job after leaving Korea. I was like, never again. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm not going back into an office. Like, and it, it's crazy. I've never been happier. <laughs> Cause you can just be yourself. I, just There's be. Like, I, I literally feel like you're stiff at work, right? Because yeah. you're, you're very aware that people are looking at you and you, you have to be a certain way, Yep. but, oh, this, listen, we're going to end this. I just want to say thank you all for listening. Baron, thank you so much for coming on. We are going to continue having conversations um, about this because, like I said, um, I'm a black woman living in the United States and whatever happens here happens to all of us. Whatever happens to any black person, any person of color, I feel it and it hurts. And that doesn't, it goes without saying that I feel the same way for all people of color, all black people everywhere. Like if there's some shit going down in England, you better believe I'm messaging Midas to check and make sure he's right? okay. Or like mm-hmm. all of them to make sure they're all right. You know what I mean? Because it's not, even though this is commonplace in the United States, this is a world problem. This, I mean, we, this yeah. is something that like we need to fix worldwide. Um, and even if it's the worst here, there's still pockets of it other places. So I just implore you to speak out about it if if you're safe. Because I definitely mm-hmm. don't want you to do anything where like it puts your life in danger or puts the people you love in danger. But if you are about it, about it and want to ride like that. Go for it. Thank Please, you. we need you. We need you. <laughs> we need you. Absolutely. It- too many people, a lot of people won't say that, but we, we need you guys. We need um, you, absolutely. And and don't believe that narrative that we don't need you because like, no, we do. you outnumber us here. In the United States, we are By very, very outnumbered. And um, anybody who's willing to stand up for us is a friend of mine. And I will support you in all your endeavors as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm really glad I didn't cry. I'm very proud of myself because I, I cried yesterday and I didn't want to cry today. Um, but like I said, if you are crying, if you're sad or whatever, we are going to put some information and some links down below that you can reach out because you don't have to deal with this alone. This is very, very hard. It's very heartbreaking, especially for my African-Americans out there. I get it. I understand. And if you even want to rant and just go off in our comments, do it. Say what you got to say. We're here for you. And for mm-hmm. all of the people who are not people of color, who stand by us, who are fighting this fight with us, because it is fucked up. It's wrong. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I appreciate your support. I'm sure Baron does, Lou oh, and yeah. Matt. We all appreciate your support. And uh, we, hope you, we hope you will continue to support us in this fight for equality. That's it. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Oh.